With our current weather conditions, it takes a real expert to create landscape that'll thrive. Riedel's Garden Center has the staff with the expertise of water requirements for plants, lawns, and landscapes that'll stand up to our changing weather conditions. With 25 years of hands-on experience, owner Darren Riedel will customize a landscape design and irrigation system to meet your expectations and our climate. It's recommended to protect your lawn using Fertilone products available at Riedel's Garden Center, an authorized dealer. Call or stop by Riedel's Garden Center today. Hello, I'm Pat Phillips, an Ellis County Master Gardener with the Cottonwood District of K-State Research and Extension. If you're a gardener in the Hayes area, you're probably saying, is the weather ever going to get, stay, get warm and stay warm so that I can plant my garden? And more specifically, can I plant my tomatoes outside yet? Tomatoes are the most popular vegetable grown in the home garden. They're easy to grow and they thrive under a variety of growing conditions. Tomatoes are native to South America and they were taken to Europe by the early explorers. While some Europeans accepted the tomato right away, others thought it was poisonous. Most European colonists in America were afraid of tomatoes until the early 1800s. My, how our view of the tomato has changed. And for good reason. Tomatoes are a very nutritious vegetable. They're high in vitamins C and A, as well as good sources of minerals such as calcium and iron. Homegrown tomatoes are a delicious addition to any meal and an easy plant to grow. So first, choose a location for your tomatoes that has full sun for at least half a day or more, at least six hours. Planting grow, grow, plants grown in the shade will be spindly and produce little or no fruit. Tomatoes are also very sensitive to frost and they do not grow well in cold garden soil. In Northwest Can Kansas, including Ellis County, where our last average frost is May 10th, this usually means holding off planting outside until mid to late May. To grow tomatoes successfully, daytime temperatures must be at least 70 to 75 degrees, with nighttime temperatures 60 degrees or higher. Soil temperatures should also be above 60 degrees. Remember, lower nighttime temperatures uh, will cause cool soil, and extended periods of cool soil will cause the roots to rot and be stunted, the plants will be stunted or even die. If the soil temperature is warm enough and you want to give your tomatoes a head start, be sure to give the plants some temporary cover to protect them from the cold nights or even cold days. You can use something like a uh, milk jug or a tin can that you've cut the bottoms and the tops out of, or you can purchase some of the newer devices such as the wall of water. Tomatoes will grow in many different kinds of soil, but they prefer deep, loamy soil with a pH of 6.2 or 6 to 6.8. Much of the soil in Ellis County tends to be heavy clay and have a pH above 7. You can improve the soil in your planting area by digging a hole 8, 12 to 18 inches deep and mixing in peat moss or compost and then refilling the hole. If this is not done, be sure to till the soil thoroughly in the growing area. To determine your pH, a soil test is needed. Directions for testing the nutrients in your soil are available at the Cottonwood District Research and Extension offices in Hayes or Great Bend. If a soil test is not available, add one to two pounds of a complete garden fertilizer per 100 square feet of garden. That would be a 10 by 10 foot plot. Avoid using any fertilizer with too much nitrogen in the first number. The excess nitrogen will cause the plants to be spindly and leafy, but they'll have little fruit. Fertilizers with the ratio of nitrogen to phosphate. Uh, the second number in the package is best. Ha the nitrogen should be half as much as the phosphate. Examples of such ratios are 5-10-10 or 6-12-12. I'll have to say these are harder to find than one might expect. So now you're ready to plant. Today, most garden per gardeners purchase tomatoes. They can be purchased in pots with multiple plants in the same pot, or they can be planted in with, purchased with single plants. The individual pots are more expensive. However, they have the advantage of uh, the plants will suffer less shock when transplanted into the garden because their roots do not have to be disturbed. Spacing depends on the size of the mature plant and whether or not it's going to be staked. Small vine types can be planted 18 to 24 inches apart. Unstaked plants should have at least 30 inches between them. If you're planting several rows, space them four feet apart. I like to make a depression in the soil and then put each plant in in order to 
retain the water. Uh, set the plants in the ground slightly deeper than they were in the pot. Cover the leaves to, at least to the first leaf. I would pinch off the small ones and cover them at least that deep. Okay. If the plants are in peat containers, some directions will say that you do not need to remove them from the pot. But I find that come fall, that peat container is often still very much intact. And the roots have not gotten out of the pot very far. So I suggest removing the peat. After planting, water the plants well, and then add one cup of starter fertilizer solution for each plant. You can purchase a starter fertilizer solution, but you can also mix three or four tablespoons of garden fertilizer with one gallon of water, and it works fine. I like to cage my tomato plants. Using a cage or a trellis for each plant can serve space in the garden. It also keeps the tomatoes and foliage off the ground while allowing plenty of foliage protection and air circulation during those hot summer months. Finding and harvesting the fruit is also much easier. Cages come in many varieties, such as the ones that are found here, that can be purchased at a local garden store or ordered through a catalog. Cages can also be made by the gardener. This cage was made from concrete wire, reinforcing wire. It's eight, an 18 to 20 inches in diameter is ideal. Can be made with a five foot length of wire and you bend one end of each of the horizontal ones and hook it around the other end um, of the wire. And then cut off the lowest horizontal wires and stick the vertical wires into the ground. A stake will help to keep the cylinder from blowing over in our heavy Kansas winds. Cages and stakes should be put over each of the plants shortly after planting. Mulch, I also think that mulching is a, is a must in the hot, dry, windy summers of western Kansas. It helps the growing plants by holding the soil moisture, controlling weeds, and keeping the soil cool. I prefer organic mulches such as straw, compost, leaves, and grass clippings. This should be put down shortly after planting before the weeds get a head start. You'll need a four inch layer of straw to create a good barrier. If using finer mulch, such as leaves or grass clippings, a two inch layer will be sufficient. This should keep the weeds in check. Natural rainfall seldom provides enough water for the gardens in, our, in the high plains. Tomatoes require about one inch of water per week. This can be supplied with sprinklers, soaker hoses, drip irrigation system when natural rainfall is not sufficient. Hand watering is not recommended. It's best to water deeply and less often. Shallow watering produces shallow roots. Apply enough water so that the soil is mo moist to the bottom of the root line, about six inches down. Check, by, check for soil moisture by using a garden trowel or even a large screwdriver. Ideally, this would mean watering once a week unless temperatures are very high, are in the high 90s and the winds are blowing wildly. During very hot days, watering may be necessary two or three times a week, but always check the moisture before watering. It is possible to drown the roots with too much water. So now you're ready to go out and plant your tomatoes. Later in the growing season, I'll be back and talk about common tomato pests and other problems. Until then, this has been Pat Phillips, Ellis County Master Gardener with the Cottonwood District K-State Research and Extension. Thank you, Pat. Okay. Before we close our program today, I'd like, excuse me, <clears throat> I'd like to share with you just a few Master Gardener timely tips. Topics that just provide some quick advice for things to do right now related to all things green and growing. As your potato plants grow taller, go ahead and mound the soil around them. This will allow the tubers to grow um, more on top, and that's where the tomatoes are, and allow them to form into that soil that you've added. Related to flowers, we've learned that if you put a paper coffee filter at the bottom of your plant pot, this will keep the soil from coming out of the holes at the bottom of your plant. Um, related to trees and shrubs, resist the urge to prune spring flowering uh, shrubs right now, like your lilacs, dogwood, and spirea, since they bloom on the old wood rather than the new wood. And once they're finished blooming, then you can go ahead and, and prune them if they need to be pruned. Um, check your trees now for bagworms from last year's infestation. The bagworms overwinter in the sacks, so if it's practical, go ahead and remove those bagworm sacks uh, by hand 
either late last fall or here early this spring, before the eggs hatch and the larvae emerge from those sacs. That's the best way to dramatically reduce the number of new bagworms. Discard these removed bagworm sacs in a tightly sealed container. Um, remove any tree stakes that have been in place for more than one growing season. By releasing those supports tied to the trees, it allows the trees to begin to sway just a little bit in the wind and that allows them to grow their own strong root structure. If you um, have any questions about today or would like more information, contact your horticulture agent at your local county extension office. I am Margie Hammerschmidt. And I am Pat Phillips, Ellis County Master Gardeners, reporting for K-State Research and Extension and Eagle TV. With our current weather conditions, it takes a real expert to create landscape that'll thrive. Riedel's Garden Center has the staff with the expertise of water requirements for plants, lawns, and landscapes that'll stand up to our changing weather conditions. With 25 years of hands-on experience, owner Darren Riedel will customize a landscape design and irrigation system to meet your expectations and our climate. It's recommended to protect your lawn using Fertilone products available at Riedel's Garden Center, an authorized dealer. Call or stop by Riedel's Garden Center today.